Welcome back to the inevitable takeover of the machines. Or the final iteration of Alpha Star, Google's deep mind project, whose goal wa was to prove that an artificial deep learning intelligence could become competent at even the most difficult tasks for humans under restrictions that, that humans would also have. This is the final iteration of Alpha Star. It is a match from the European Grand Master Ladder, the home of Cyril Rayner and also everyone else. E the Alpha Star Final Client, it played uh, about 30 games on the ladder as each race, reaching Grand Master as each one. I'm going to try to bring you a game of each one. They, they've anonymized the replays, so for all we know, this could be Cyril on the other side. There's been some leaks and information, and some players have identified themselves in the replays, but I don't have that information at the moment. Uh, but the summary is, the Alpha Star team and DeepMind ha has gone through several iterations since since it was first debuted last year um, in, in their, well, exploits in StarCraft II. As Terran, Zerg, and Protoss, Alpha Star has reached Grand Master League on the ladder. Some major restrictions include being limited to 22 actions per minute per 5 seconds, which sounds like a lot, but that also includes moving the camera. In fact, I'm actually for the start of this game up against this Grandmaster Zerg. It could be Cyril. We'll say it is Cyril, but uh, until Cyril confirms it, I don't think we can know for sure. Um, but I'll go ahead and, and make sure we're on the Alpha Star cam here for a little bit of the early game. Um, but the summary from the article, once again, link below. I don't feel qualified. I don't quite have the time. I'm, I'm recording this right before leaving for BlizzCon because that's when they re release the information. I have very limited time. Um, according to players like Kelazor, it, it really opens up opportunities and ideas that a lot of players didn't think of before. And especially because you can tell Alpha Star is working with some restrictions. It has to move the camera like a player. It, it can't... Uh, like, like a player normally has to find ways to move the camera. There are options like camera location hotkeys. They can click on the minimap. They can scroll to the edge of the screen. These are all inputs that a normal player has to make uh, in, in order to simply move their, their interface and their ability to move their units. So... Let's, let's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to break it down also. Uh, if, if maybe you're a little new to StarCraft or you haven't watched in a while. Currently... Alpha Star is doing almost exactly what you'd see a professional player do. This is now. Now, if you read the article, it has learned from those professional players and from playing against itself. But this is a quick expansion for Alpha Star's Protoss with a wall, using adepts for a little bit of scouting. It appears to have learned from players like Mana and Neeb and, and probably Stats. Wherever else it's facing on the European ladder. M more Neeb in Showtime. But coming in, looking for some kills. Great dodges there by the GM Zerg. In order to save the drones. But the Adept actually committing when it thinks it has an opportunity. So far, the APMs. Actually, Alpha Star maintaining a cool 140 so far. Mr. Zerg opting, well... Zerg naturally has a little bit of a higher APM because of its mechanics, and and it appears Alpha Star thinks there's an all-in on the way. He's he's building it's building some shield batteries. A Stargate is the usual choice. Plenty of probes. This was uh, one of the biggest standouts, I guess, of the of the first presentation of Alpha Star earlier. What was simply how many probes it built. Like just continuing to build workers. A lot of professional players will will stop building those workers relatively early on. I gotta say, right now, if you covered up the names, and, and Google has kind of covered up the names as it is, this this looks... The, the shield batteries are the first thing indicated here that looks a little weird. A Stargate in the wall, that's not uncommon. It's not most common, but it's not uncommon. A few Adepts sent out, Oracles, a third base at 4 minutes and 30 seconds, a little on the greedy side, but definitely not out of the, the realm of normality here and once again that doesn't necessarily mean it's the best it just means it's the best the humans have come up with that's probably something i'm going to continue to harp on adepts coming in will shade to the natural after seeing all those zerglings looking for kills oracles heading towards the third simultaneously i'm going to go to the alpha star cam here for a moment oracles find some queens move away stalkers warped in back at home to deal with the scouting overlord 
Now I'm very interested. This is this is the part where many human pe human people <laughs> human players struggle. Uh, is is the mid game phase? We've kind of poked and prodded each other. We've done a little damage um, and counter damage here with the zerg going for plenty of zerglings to deal with the adepts and turning them across the map to try to kill the third. We'll pull back here. Adepts warped in. Three oracles and no moracles. Not foracles. Okay. Stop it. You're being boracles. Oh! <clears throat> Stop it. Stop it, Winter. I have to tell myself that sometimes. I'm just a person. I'm just a man. I think. Anyways, robotics facility. Another oracle. Still continued probe production. Alpha Star keeping up with the Zerg player. We're on King's Cove, which is pretty stereotypically a, a defensive map because of the rush distance, simply the distance between the players, and the fact that there are ramps up to your first three bases, making it difficult to attack once you have a relatively large army. So far... Well, a robotics bay is the choice. A robo follow-up usually gives you more of a stable ground army. Uh, a little bit odd still with the shield batteries. I wonder what Alpha Star was calculating there that it, it might need to deal with. The Oracle's going to come in looking for an opportunity. Zerg has body... Well, not body block, but just boxed out the Oracles with a nice spore crawler placement. A and from here, it looks like our Zerg player going for something that a lot of Protoss... I'm, I'm, a lot of Protoss have been struggling with lately, um, not only on the ladder, but in, in professional tournaments, is potentially Swarm Host. There's a chance this is straight up to Hive, but Zerg has opted for an infestation pit. And a lot of Protosses have been trying to figure out how to deal with that Swarm Host play. In fact, last year's finals were Serral versus Stats. And, and Serral really, really showcasing the strength of the Swarm Host play. It's gotten even more advanced nowadays. The Oracle's coming in. Alpha Star with some great Oracle micro. Looks like it will be losing. Oh, that second Oracle coming in. This is a bit bold. The Spore Crawler not being retargeted by Zerg, but the Oracle's finding a whole lot of kills. 19 kills so far. Interesting. Willing to sacrifice the Oracles for drone kills. And lots of drone kills indeed. While simultaneously moving a little bit of an awkwardly small ground army here. Adept shading away. That's not nearly enough stuff. Alpha Star says, look, look how big my army is. Please kill my... I love the panic hallucinations. The disruptor shot is off center. Alpha Star panicking a little when caught by an army it just did not expect. Nice target fire there by Zerg. Well done to take out the disruptor. And so far, Alpha Star... Looking good on the harassment potential. Looks like the drones weren't pulled back. Alpha Star has 78 probes. You need to calm down. If you calm down, you're going to have a problem. I know. Alpha Star, so what I, what I want to really point out is, is the multi-pronged harassment seems to be really mapped out. But the execution is definitely a little bit awkward. In, well, speaking of awkward execution, it looks like our human Zerg has, has moved his controller thumbstick, I can only assume, and misplaced his, his fourth player by a pretty serious margin. Uh, fourth, fourth player. Fourth base, rather. But it is going to be Nidus Swarm Host. Honestly, I randomly picked a match out of the replay pack. It's available. Check out the article in the description. Um, I, I randomly picked a match against a Grandmaster player. And I'm really glad we're getting this Swarm Host Nidus play. This is really what is the biggest issue right now for Protoss players in this matchup. Oh, Disruptor shots coming out. Uh, usually the Swarm Host Nidus comes out a little earlier, but Alpha Star has been doing a pretty good job of building up the economy and the army. Just the sheer 91 probes. You got to simmer down. You got to simmer down. That's by all measures, I would say that's too many, but maybe in my, uh, my biological mind. I, I am not expanding it nearly enough. Dark Templar, Blink Stalkers, plus two. We're going all over the tech tree, branching out. Alpha Star has built uh, a little bit of everything, to be honest. We got Stargate units, we got Templars, we got Disruptors, we got Immortals, we got Anti-Ground, we got Anti-Air, we got a Warp Prism in the mix. I'm going to go to the Alpha Star cam as the Swarm Hose come in here. Now, this is Alpha Star controlling the camera. Oh, the Disruptors... Maybe looking for the Locust. I, I don't think it really registered that Locust do begin flight. They eventually swoop down, but I actually a little bit of Miss Micro there. Oh my god, he shot himself in the face! No! Oh! Oh! 
was that a select all army hotkey? Miss Micro there? Oh, Alpha Star! What? Oh, we've all been there. Okay, I'm, are we convinced this isn't just me playing on a different account? I'm not 100% directly in the face. That it, it selected the Purification Nova, which can be individually selected afterwards. Oh, there's a nice shot to make up for some of it. Go back to the everyone cam. Don't. Oh. But shoot, that was a significant blow. That disruptor not only was at a key time to kill some Zerg units, but also taking a big chunk out of the army and, and making it a little bit harder to come across the map. Still, though, as I always say uh, with my human students, micro, your macro. More stuff counters less stuff, usually a little less PG rated. But we see here that Alpha Star maintaining 80 probes, four bases, just continually spending its money. Uh, the GM Zerg player, he's been spending, he's been building, but it's Roach Ravager Swarm Host. The supply just does not stack up that well here. It, when you see equal supplies and one player has Swarm Host, it's not going well for the Zerg. The Blink Stalker is coming in, an iconic unit used by Alpha Star, who's 50 APM less, 200 APM. That's less than my average. And, and once again, I'm, on a good day, I'm barely Grandmaster. Neve, on the other hand, 300. Showtime, 300 plus. Mana as well. He's 100 APM. Uh, well, Alpha Star's 100 actions per minute under uh, your average professional player, if not more. But the, the simple version is, the Blink Stalkers are too cost effective. The amount of units that Alpha Star has been allowed to put on the field is overwhelming. But the control is, is, is nothing special. Roach and Ravager, it, it appears the Zerg, well, well, from the start, has been scrambling a little bit to try to figure out what to deal with, and it was a bit of a, a quick transition from that mass oracle play into um, more disruptor shots coming out. Here come the locusts. The army's being whittled down. The swarm host, oh, a miss blink there. A recall, but it's gonna leave the disruptors behind. A bit of an awkward warp prism micro away as well. Some incredibly human mistakes being made by Alpha Star, but the simple version is critical damage was done by all measures, mechanical and otherwise. The GM Zerg player has got swarm hosts. He's got 140 supply. Uh, it's still 86 probes. This is not the place you really want to have swarm hosts right now. This one was kind of an unknown quantity, it seems. Oh, nice disruptor hit. Another disruptor shot. That one's gonna find the mark. There was that one misfire, but overall, doing a pretty good job against the swarm host. Still, the being limited in those actions per minute. I I, I do want to do when I, when I have a little more time. I want to spend. Um, well, hopefully at BlizzCon I'll be able to talk. Uh, I don't know if the DeepMind developers will be there, but uh, we'll be able to find more information about exactly how Alpha Star was limited. There's going to be a, a uh, an article article published, from my understanding, not just a blog post, but an actual journalistic article, which uh, still exists nowadays, apparently, uh, detailing the methods and the details. Wow, I have incredible words. Good thing I didn't write the article. But I exactly what restrictions were placed, because what I'm seeing are, are sometimes in top-level fights. Players will be blinking. Stalkers, they'll, they'll shoot up to a thousand plus actions per minute. At least, at least instantaneous. They won't maintain it the whole game. That's, that's nearly impossible. Oh, nice counterattack. Alpha Star struggling. Okay, wait, this game isn't over yet. It's, it's getting closer. Alpha Star looked to have an insurmountable advantage. With, with multiple bases, a huge worker lead, still a strong army. But the Swarm Host and Counter Harass, shut down by Dark Templar, which is a, a great choice against things like Locust, because usually, well, it, it's tough to remember to bring an Overseer, and usually it's not something you're prioritizing. Detection for those Dark Templar. 
Oh, there's still a Dark Templar in there. Nicely done by Alpha Star. Slipping one in. A classic tactic. There's still one Zergling. I hear a Disruptor shot that just... Well, it was optimistic. Oh my god. The Locusts are really ripping into things here. But once again, the momentum is still heavily in Alpha Star's favor. Just with the sheer amount of units. The Swarm Host, which have been keeping the Zerg alive. Being sliced, diced, and, and eviscerated on the high ground there and it looks like that's going to be that alpha star takes it uh but really i i okay let's let's break it down a little i want to there were a few points in here i want to go back to that harass because i was i was making some metaphorical commentary and all that well not metaphorical but I, I was getting a little off topic there was some harass in here uh right at right as alpha star pulled back um like, during the fights here, I want to go to the Alpha Cam. See exactly what's being selected. Uh, you can see, it, it does kind of seem like Alpha Star's using minimal control groups. Maybe manually selecting with the mouse, or at least mouse input. For a lot of these. Huh. And then a recall there. It's, it's actually... And, and this is mentioned in the article as well from some of the pro players. Some of the stuff it's doing looks incredibly human. It is... It is a little uncomfortable. Now... It's... I, I'm sure because of the restrictions placed on it, but... The way that sometimes not all the units are being quite selected, things are a little bit off-center... Uh, maybe, like, for example, Disruptor shots, shooting their own units in the face. So, now, the point of Alpha Star, and, and I, I'm gonna have to, I'm already, I, I really want to just get these casts out before I get on a plane, but, um, the, the learning process is really what we gotta focus on, guys, and, and, I, I want to do my clickbait videos as much as the next community caster, but the the entire point of DeepMind and of Alpha Star is not to prove that robots can micro better uh, or artificial intelligence knows how to split marines better or anything like that. It's about learning how to play StarCraft, both from experience and, and just almost from a vacuum. So there apparently is a combination of Alpha Star playing against itself and learning from humans. So have we developed technology that can do that to such an extent it is either comparable or superior to humanity? So what do you think? Uh, I know this was just a short example. There will be more out there. You can check out the replays for yourself. This once again was just a random uh, pick against a Grandmaster player from the final Protoss replay pack. Please check out Terran and Zerg. Remember, Alpha Star, most experienced at Protoss, and I'll spoil it, had the best record on the ladder uh, as a Protoss. Honestly, Alpha Star has more experience as Protoss. So how is that going to manifest itself? Check out Terran, check out Zerg. Uh, I'll, I'll be uh, doing those as well. But this was super eye-opening, super interesting. And I hope you guys enjoyed my breakdown. And, and if you happen to be watching before BlizzCon, check it out there. Um, and I look forward to seeing more and talking about it. Thank you for watching. Good luck. Have fun. Have an amazing day. Like and subscribe and all that other YouTube stuff. Uh, and I'll see you next time. Stay chill.